Did you know that 100% of divorces start with marriage? Wow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jason, and welcome to the three biggest mistakes lovers make that make them frustrated, disappointed, and lonely. But first, do you mind if I share a personal story with you? No. Please do. Is it the sucking the ice cream story? <laughs> You, you don't want me to share a story with you? Thank you. I was six years old and a cousin of mine wanted to kiss me. It was the scariest and most overwhelming feeling I've ever experienced. Ever. And I just ran away as she chased me until I could find a good hiding spot. I had a crush on Amy Harrison from the ages of 12 to 15. She liked me too. I couldn't ask her out. I was terrified. Petrified. I was 25 years old when I asked someone on a date for the first time. I ended up dating her, marrying her, separating from her, and divorcing her within four years. So you might think I'd be the last person on earth to give anyone relationship advice, right? Well, you may be right. But since then, I've used the last 13 years wisely. I've made it my personal mission to learn about myself and myself in relationships. Even though I'm not currently in a successful, long-term, intimate, connected relationship with another human being, I am a very happy person. I believe whether you're in a relationship or not, my experiences as a single man could help you in some way. So are you ready to hear the three biggest mistakes lovers make that leave them frustrated, disappointed, and lonely? They can't ask for what they want. These lovers make the number three mistake on a daily basis. They expect their partners, friends, and family to read their minds and inherently know what they need at all times. And if they don't perform, these lovers kill their friends and family off in one way or another. Let's make up a story here featuring two lovebirds, John and Josephine. John really wants to go to Florida to see his parents, but John knows that Josephine is angry with his mom, so he doesn't say anything. Instead of creating some options such as A, going to Florida by himself, B, bringing Josephine along and visiting his parents alone, C, talking to Josephine, finding out what she's angry about, and enroll her in calling his mom and getting it sorted out. No, instead of any of those options, those things would just take too much time, too much effort, and there could be a risk of failure. So not only does John withhold sharing what he really wants, he eats his resentment and disappointment without Josephine knowing any better. But that's where he gets blindsided. We could all see this coming, but John couldn't. Now, Josephine eventually gets fed up so much with his passive aggressive behavior, his silent treatment, starts yelling at him about leaving his socks on the floor, calls him a slob, and demands he clean the house immediately. John, on the other hand, is wondering why is she getting so upset about one little sock? Unbeknownst to him, she is simply reacting to his withholding his wants and desires. Now, the stepsister to not asking for what you want is not knowing what you want in the first place. So what do these lovers do when they find themselves without a clue as to what they really want? First, they need to think about how they want to feel. They think about what's important to them. They think about being at the end of their life and looking back on it all. What do they want to be able to say at the end of it? We all lose our way from time to time, and taking 15 minutes a day to get grounded and centered can go a long way to get in touch with what you really want. Sometimes it's not even that we don't know what we want, it's that we don't think we can get what we want. We, we're doing some vision boards today. You have to believe that what you want is possible. If you can't do that, there's not much point. But if you can open your mind to what is possible just for a moment, and let go of all your limitations, fears, and doubts. You just might surprise yourself with what your mind comes up for you. 
Are you ready for the number two mistake, Lovers Yes, number two! Number two. Oh, that's not me. Who we think we are greatly influences how our lives unfold. In fact, one would argue who we think we are is everything. If a person believes they're not good at math, for instance, they're probably going to have a hard time with taxes or money. Really, anything mathematical. They may think that they're not being good at math as a truth, like gravity, or the chemical makeup of water being two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. But it's actually just a set of behaviors and self-enforced restrictions that have been repeated over and over again for all but the first few years of their lives. You see, if you tell yourself you're not good at math, you don't even have to try. Your ego gets to remain perfectly intact, keeping you safe and protected from potential failure, heartache, or disappointment. Now, multiply, I'm not good at math with about 100 other things, and you've got most people's lives. From the time they wake up in the morning until they go to bed at night, they have filled themselves with limitations, restrictions, and personal truths that stop them from even attempting anything new. Now, uh, if you're here with your husband, wife, partner, um, I request that uh, you pick a partner other than them. Okay, so uh, Sean and Kyle. No ice. Uh, no ice. <laughs> Kathleen and Karen. And Steve, you come up, come up here with me. So what I want you to do is pick an A. Who's A? Put up your hand, A. Steve, you're A? Okay, uh, the other person's gonna start. So for one minute each, you wanna share with your partner something that you can't do, you know you can't do, and uh, something you're not good at, something you feel is a personal truth, like guaranteed, like gravity, I cannot do this. Okay? Go. One minute each. Basis. Uh, I go first. Um, okay, so something I can't do is... Uh, like something I can't do is... Uh, uh, that's possible. Yeah. That is something I'm absolutely going to do. <laughs> would be being the Prime Minister of Canada. Or being the Mayor of Seattle. Uh, yeah, uh, and the reason... I wouldn't want to have all those well, people change my life all the time. Yeah. I want to be able to walk yeah. and have my own life. I don't have to be able to cry. I just want to be anonymous. Yeah. 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 I want to be able to hide that. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I heard. That's why I couldn't be honest. And it would probably, I'm not a politician, you know. I'm very good at uh, you know, being the politician. Yeah. 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 Okay, now switch. Let's have A's share. See what's something. Okay, let's finish up. Does anyone want to share their their personal truth of what they feel they can't do? Something like you cannot do. Can't stay in a boring, repetitive job. Can't stand, you can, can't do a boring, repetitive job. Got it. Anyone else? No one else? So far, I see that I can't stay in one place for too long. Can't stay in one place for too long. Gotcha. I know that uh, too long is kind of old. Can't stay in one place for too long. Okay, cool. Anything from the ladies? I can't leave my job. Can't leave your job. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so now, are you ready for the number one mistake yes. lovers make that leave them disappointed, frustrated, and lonely? Please! I can't live without you. I can't live without you. How many times have you heard your friends on the phone or in person or on Facebook who felt their life was over after a spurned lover or an end of a relationship? Isn't it painful, it's so painful to watch, to have to watch them go through this? How much advice did this person get about, oh, there's plenty of fish in the sea or another will come along, don't worry, it's okay, you're too good for him. 
It has been proven that rejection or relationship loss affects the same part of the brain responsible for addictions. And so for this person, it really feels like they are losing control in so much pain and would do anything to have it stop. And that is the trap that needs to be avoided. But how? How can you help a person who seems so dejected and down? Well, first, the person must do it on their own, and they must practice. The practice is not dissimilar to learning a new instrument, martial art, uh, hobby, or sport. It is the practice of self-love. So what is self-love? Can anyone give me their definition of self-love? Didn't George Michael get arrested for that in a washroom once? <laughs> okay, that's, that's one version of self-love. <laughs> Anyone else? What, what was that in the story? Oh, it was a joke. It was about George Michael in oh, a I washroom in LA. Like a uh, yeah, George Michael might have had some good ideas. My question, Sean, was what is self-love to you? What is the definition of self-love to you? <laughs> consulted me on the phone one and coach, coached me once and said, Jason, love the fuck out of yourself. Do you remember saying that one time, Sean? Yeah, it was a good one. There's, there's things that people say to me that I remember, and that's, that's one thing that I always remember from Sean. So, a, de a definition that I found on Wikipedia, uh, is uh, 1956, psychologist and social philosopher Eric Fromm proposed that loving oneself is different from being arrogant. It's different from being conceited or egocentric. He proposed that loving oneself means caring about oneself, taking responsibility for oneself, respecting oneself, and knowing oneself. For example, being realistic and honest about one's strengths and weaknesses. He proposed further that in order to be able to truly love another person, a person needs first to love oneself in this way. Sounds nice, right? But why do so few people actually practice this? Because it's their desire. They come out of this womb, out of the womb as this defenseless, vulnerable little creature. And for many, many months, and even several years, depend exclusively on their mother and father to provide for their every physical and emotional need. They learn how to depend on other people. That's how they survive. The habits and behaviors these people develop as a child follow them right into adulthood. But the crucial bit of information that's missing here is they actually don't need anyone anymore. They don't need anyone to take care of themselves anymore. They're a fully grown adult who can cook, get to work, and somehow generally do all the responsible things that are required of them as an adult in a complicated, busy world. If you ask them though, they will still tell you, oh I need her, I, I need her, I can't live without her. Of course they can. You know that, and I know that, but they can't see it. They can't live without air, water, and a bit of food, but the more they tell themselves they can't live without another human being, they will just keep on coming up with every reason why. And there's nothing wrong with this, but this be can become a toxic mix of emotions, feelings, thoughts, and behaviors that separate this person from reality. And it gives them full authority to feel sorry for themselves and put their entire life on hold until this person either takes them back or they find someone else. Either of these could take months, years, or an eternity. So in the meantime, why not learn to be alone? Why not learn how to love yourself? Whether you're in a relationship or not, learn how to love yourself. Learn how to care for yourself. And when that person comes along, or if you're already in a relationship and that person gives you a nice little bonus, what a nice little bonus it is. This is the reason I'm standing here before you today. 
Being alone in or out of a committed relationship is a practice art. The exercise of learning about yourself, being comfortable in your own skin, listening to what you need, and being willing to give that to yourself is a gift. And it's one that you can practice every day. Once you've gotten there, anything you part, your partner gives you is a bonus. You are depending on yourself to make yourself happy. This has a twofold benefit for you. When your cup is full of self-love and appreciation, you are able to give your overflow to your partner or a friend or a family member. And the real kicker, a person who knows how to love themselves is super hot, sexy, and attractive. So, just to reiterate again, what are the three biggest mistakes lovers make that leave them frustrated, disappointed, and lonely? Number three, anyone remember? <laughs> Anybody? It's, um, feeling like you can't live without this. Okay, well, what was number three? Oh. What they can't do. I don't know what I want. Yeah. That's right. They don't ask for what they want, they don't know what they want. Number two? Okay, number two is, that's not me. No, I've never heard that, no, that's not me. And the number one biggest mistake lovers make? I can't live without you. So, thank you so much for listening, and thank you for letting me share my verbal gift with you, my dear friends. I love you dearly. Uh, thank you so much for making the Lovers Ball an enjoyable experience for me. Thank you for coming all the way out here. Thank you.